Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be sharing with you my November wrap up. I read 31 books in the month of November. However, a lot of them were novellas. Novellas? Novellas? Anyway, um, so it's not quite as impressive as it sounds, but I'm going to share them with you. I am not going to go over the 12 Thanksgiving novellas that I read because I have a separate video on that. I mean, I do have vlogs and stuff for a lot of these books, but um, first of all, Thanksgiving's already passed, so you probably don't even care anymore, but second of all, I do have a video like this where I just like sit down and talk you through each book, and I did that with my Thanksgiving novellas. So if you're interested in my thoughts on those 12, you can go check that out, but hopefully that will keep this video from being forever long. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so my stats for the month, my ratings, I had one DNF, I had four two star reads, three two and a half star reads, and with those, I think they were all the novellas because usually if a book's going to be a two star for me, I don't finish it, but with the novellas being so short, I did, so I think that's where those came in. I had four three star reads, I had two three and a half star reads, eight four star reads, one four and a half star read, and eight five star reads. Um, 22 of them were ebooks, five of them were physical, and four of them were audiobooks. Um, I already owned nine of them or bought them on Kindle. Um, one of them was an ARC, two of them were from Audible, 16 of them were from Kindle Unlimited, and three were from Scribd. And then eight of them were historical romance, and 23 of them were contemporary romance. Um, and then all 31 of them were adult. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first book that I read in November was Indigo by Beverly Jenkins. This was my first Beverly Jenkins, and I loved it so much. Um, I gave this five stars. This is in my vlog of me reading super hyped historical romances and it is hyped for a reason. It is so good. Um, I fully now understand what people mean when they say that Beverly Jenkins weaves in history from the perspective of like a black person back during slavery, but also she weaves in little things that like you might not have known about American history. Um, like her hands were indigo because that was where she had grown up was she was um, like, I don't know if it was harvesting, but like she dealt a lot with plants that dyed her hands and her feet indigo. Um, and so that is what he nicknames her in the book. But um, anyway, this is a really, really great love story and I loved it, highly recommend it, and cannot wait to read more from Beverly Jenkins. Okay, next I read The Secret by Julie Garwood. This was for the same vlog, and again, I loved it. Gave it five stars, another book, totally worth the hype. I was nervous going into this because the hype was so strong, but it definitely came through. This book is the sweetest thing. Like, um, is his name Ian? I want to say Ian. Yes. Um, he is the Laird of the Clan, and he goes to fetch... Judith from England to bring her back to Scotland or bring her to Scotland because her best friend is having a baby and they promised each other that they would be there for that when they have kids, whatever. Anyway, um, and he is like so grumpy, but he like instantly is obsessed with her and like won't let anyone else get near her and wants to protect her. And she is super like bubbly and like brings out the more positive side of him. It's just so cute. I love this book so much. Okay, then I did an author binge of R.S. Gray, and I read Date Me Like You Mean It. Um, I gave this one five stars. So this is about two people who have been friends forever, and they are roommates. She, they've both been in love with each other forever, but the first half of the book you only get her perspective, so it seems like it's unrequited, but it's not. Um, but then they have to, well not have to, they like fake date for a while, but it really only lasts for like a chapter or two, and that's where like they both are starting to realize that the other person might kind of have feelings 
But then there's this huge conflict and things blow up, whatever. But it was cute. I enjoyed it. I would say it's probably more of like a four and a half star read, but I gave it five stars on Goodreads. Okay, next was How to Love a Duke in 10 Days by Kerrigan Byrne. I gave this one five stars. I think this is my favorite Kerrigan Byrne book I've read so far. I've only read three, but I think this one is my favorite. So there are three girls who are at, I think it's college. I don't know if it's high school or college. I'm pretty sure it is university and there are very few women there and so they form this red rogues society and they like look out for each other and anyway it is one of their stories this one is alexandra i think and she like had something really terrible happen to her in the prologue of the book and that really affects her relationship later on but she has this marriage of convenience and then they fall for each other and it is the sweetest thing this book is very emotional um but so good and then i read the second book in the series all scott and bothered i also gave five stars didn't love it as much as the first one but it was still great and this one is about cecilia so another one of the red rogues and um her romance she like inherits this like gambling establishment and one of the guys who or I guess the guy who's like trying to find out if this establishment is involved in some other sketchy stuff ends up being the one to fall for her and it's super cute okay then I read The Duke and I by Julia Quinn I gave this four stars this is the first book in the Bridgerton series. I'm sure you've heard a ton about it by now, but it is a brother's best friend romance, and it is, is it Marriage of Convenience? I marked it as Marriage of Convenience. Oh, it's a fake relationship. Yes. Um, anyway, this was super cute. I loved it and was excited to carry on in the series. I'm really excited for the show. Um, then I read The Viscount Who Loved Me, which is the second book in the series, and I liked this one a little bit more. I gave this one five stars. This one is Anthony's story. He is the oldest Bridgerton and the first brother. And then we'll skip to the next one. I read An Offer from a Gentleman, which is book three. Gave this one four stars. This is, um, what is his name? Starts with a B. Benedict. This is Benedict's story. And it's a Cinderella retelling. And I think that was kind of what put me off of it a little bit. Um, parts of it I really loved. Parts of it, not so much. So I gave it four stars. Okay, then I did a reading vlog that you saw a few days ago for my vlogmas day two, I think, um, of Blind Date with a Book. It was kind of a fail. Didn't really love any of them, and it was a pretty expensive box. So I read Far From Home by Laura Lee Brown. Um, gave this one a three and a half stars. This is a female-female um, romance, like, um, marriage of convenience. It was good but there's a lot of talk about anorexia like a lot um so trigger warning for that if that is a trigger for you but I I don't know that just kind of lowered my rating I did give it four stars at first and then the more I thought about it the more I was like no I think it's like a three and a half star I also read Trust Fund Fiance by Naima Simone for that this one I enjoyed but it just felt like there were holes in the plot and it is the fourth book in the series so I don't know if that is why but I'm pretty sure all of the books in this series are written by different people so I feel like it shouldn't matter that much but there definitely felt like there were some holes in it for me but this is another um, marriage of convenience they have been friends for a while and um, anyway once they get married like they do fall for each other pretty quickly but um, it's like they set up this marriage of convenience and then the reason for it falls through. So they're like, okay, well, we don't need to be engaged anymore. But then they still elope, but neither one of them get anything from it. But they're still, like, not admitting that they like each other. So it's kind of weird. Um, anyway, I gave this book three stars. And then the last one for that video was Any Rogue Will Do by Bethany Bennett. And I DNF'd this one. I got about 80 pages in. Nothing was happening. It was super boring. So I DNF'd it. And looking at the people I follow on Goodreads, two people have read it. One DNF'd, one gave it two stars. So I don't feel too bad about that. Okay, then I read Snowed In by Jessica Calla. 
Um, oh yes, this one was cute. I gave this book four stars. This is about a single dad of two girls and um, he works for the company and one day after a company party, he sees the CEO of the company um, standing outside by herself in like the snowstorm waiting for her car um, and he like offers to take her back to her house or something, whatever. But anyway, because of the storm, she ends up going home with him. Um, nothing happens. This book is very like, I don't like using the word clean. I, I use it all the time, I know, because I can't think of a better option because it's not closed door because literally nothing happens. Um, anyway. So she ends up staying at her his house and then they kind of develop a friendship from there and then the friendship turns to more they both like liked each other but he's not quite ready for a relationship because of his late wife and um, there are other issues involved. It was cute. It wasn't anything super spectacular but if you're looking for a fun Christmassy read um, I would recommend this. I will say the title is a little misleading. It's called Snowed In and they're not really ever snowed in. There are a couple times that the weather changes plans and that they spend time together because of the weather, but it's not ever like a fully snowed in type of a situation. So, okay, then I read Best Friends Don't Kiss by Max Monroe. This is a friends to lovers romance. She, um, is going back home for her high school reunion and her sister's wedding and Christmas and she needs a date for the wedding and um, the reunion and so she joins this dating app and starts going on all of these crazy apps and her best friend is like why are you doing this like this is not safe these guys are crazy whatever but he still isn't refusing to like go home with her and so finally he has enough with it and he's like okay hey, I'll do it I'll be your fake date whatever and then they fall for each other from there. It was really cute. I gave it four stars. I would recommend it, but it wasn't anything like mind blowing. Okay, and then I read six Christmas novellas in November. I have a video coming out this week of Christmas novellas, um, but I'm only gonna tell you the ones that I liked. So right now I will go over the ones that I didn't love. And then I'll save the other ones for that video. So the first one is Jingle Lady by Melissa Williams. I gave this two and a half stars. This is very short. Um, it's this girl is trying to dry out, I think, mint leaves in her house. And she the fire alarm goes off. She like sets it on fire, right? So the firefighters come and one of the firefighters asks her out, asks her out. He asks her if he can come back later with pizza and they can have dinner together. Well, he does come back with pizza and they just instantly start going at it. And then all of a sudden they're like in love after one day together. Um, that was really what did it for me was the ending where they're like in love, the insta love part. I didn't really mind the smuttiness. It was just the insta love. So I gave that one two and a half stars. Um, we'll save that one for later. We'll save that one. Um, then I read 12 Dates of Christmas by Rilsey Adams. I sadly did not like this. Um, I know people really love Rosie Adams. This was my first book from her and I gave it two and a half stars. It just was very, they've been friends forever, but she like, they slept together. And so she stopped talking to him because it was going to ruin their friendship because they slept together. And I was like, well, you're not even giving it a chance. You completely are ruining your friendship right now just by ignoring him. So yeah, I don't know. It, it, yeah. I don't know what else to say about it. Okay. I think that's it. I'll save the other ones for my Christmas novellas vlog. Not vlog, but my Christmas novellas recommendations that will be coming this week. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you have not already. And I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.